Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline and we are gonna be talking about second day hair today. Let's get started with some of my favorite products. So dry shampoo is a must for me. I actually get breakouts around my scalp and hairline area. So I try not to let my hair go too long. Two days is usually my max and I love a good dry shampoo just to give my hair a bit of oomph and to tone down any of that shine that usually appears right at the root. The Chlorine dry shampoo is classic. It is kind on the scalp. Batiste is also good. I just find Batiste to be a little bit more gritty and it usually has more of an artificial fragrance. The new Batiste waterless cleansing foam is cool. So I'm gonna try a bit of this today just to show you how it goes. So I'm gonna put some into my hand. You can see here it is quite foamy. It has a nice floral scent to it and you're supposed to just apply it into the hairline and then massage it in. Regardless, it goes on feeling pretty wet. So I find it to just be um, maybe a little bit counter what you want it to feel like. The good part about this mousse is that it does give you some volume. It feels refreshing. Um, but does it really mat out your hair like a regular dry shampoo would do? I don't think so. The first time I used it, um, I used it on very, very oily hair. It didn't do enough for me. So this could be a conjunction dry shampoo. So you could use a bit of that one to give you that lift because I find the chlorine doesn't actually give me much lift. Then you could use a spritz of the chlorine or regular Batiste just to give you that matte finish. And as you can see with this waterless cleansing foam, it's good for all hair colors because it did not put any tint whatsoever in my hair. So that's great. Another tried and true for me is the Colab Volume Extreme. This gives you that sticky, gritty, intense volume. So as you can see here, my hair is pretty uh, limp and it's also very silky this will give you texture immediately. So I need to spray this one from a bit more of a distance and it immediately makes your hair feel almost gluey in the best way. And it gives me very instantaneous lift. There is a multitude of products that can give you lift, but nothing gives me that lift and clean feeling like this. It also dries out my hair in the best way. This can dry out your ends. So if you do find that you get dry ends, this is the Garnier Frizz Guard. This is dry conditioner. So this is cool as a second day product. I know Dry Bar has one too. You can just put it down, you know, at the ends of your hair. Again, very nice fragrance. This will help with static and just giving your hair a little bit more of that fresh look versus um, sometimes you can get kind of straw like at the end of your hair. So here we go. You can see or like even already the part that over here that I really added volume to looks so much better than the other side. Um, so as a matter of fact, I could go out just like this for my second day hair, add those products and I'm good to go. Um, but I usually like to step it up a bit. So. I have my hair parted in the center right now and sometimes I just want it off my face. So I will use a great little hair elastic. This is a new Invisibobble right here. I brought the packaging to show you. It's their Slim. This is in the Bronze Me Pretty color. So after putting in my dry shampoo, if I feel like doing a low ponytail, I'll brush my hair out with my Aveda paddle brush. And that also helps to distribute the dry shampoo. And then I will start to really comb my hair down with my nails. So really brushing through, combing down, tucking it behind my ears, gathering right at the nape of my neck. And I'll just kind of finger comb the hair into the ponytail. You could use a brush or a comb for this. I like using my fingers because I can really then feel where any bumps are. And then I will just put my little hair elastic in and I have a really sweet, chic ponytail. Again, brushing down any of those little bangs or flyaways. You could always put a pretty little barrette in. I have some shiny bobby pins that are great. I like the bobby pins also that have a curve to them. I just find they look so much better. They kind of hug the head. 
So you can see this great little Invisibobble adds some pretty color to your hair, but if you did want something different, also by the way, this is a very chic look too, just by kind of combing down the sides and putting a bobby pin, highly recommend. Um, you could use a great little scrunchie. So again, finger combing into the low ponytail. When we were younger, I feel like the low pony was so nerdy or like, no. Um, and I just hate how my head looks when I do kind of a mid head ponytail. I just find it to be so unflattering and it's also uncomfortable. I find it pulls on my head a lot and especially when I'm driving, there's no happy place to put your ponytail uh, kind of in the headrest. So um, a nice high bun or you know high pony is also really great, but I just don't have the length for that right now. So the low pony is my favorite. Now, if you do want something a little bit different, the half up is fantastic. So as you can see, I parted my hair in the center. Occasionally, because I have a cowlick on this side, I will part my hair to the side and I could do that, you know, low pony with the part to the side as well. I think right now the most chic option is the middle part. So if you haven't tried a middle part, now is the time. So half up. This is perfect if your hair is greasy and you just don't wanna deal with it. So I usually go from the temples with my thumbnail and just pull up that front part of hair. It's important to get kind of the thumb to create, or even the, the forefinger, to create a nice pretty line so that your hair looks even on both sides. And then this is where I absolutely will use my hairbrush to brush up the hair from the front and back. I'll show you from the back. I just use that brush to really pick up the hair. Got a little bit extra there. And it doesn't have to be perfect at the back. You can just feel around a bit. I'm actually bringing the hair quite far forward, almost as far forward as it goes to give me some great height. I had bangs that were growing out as well. And what's great about this particular look is that it gives you some interest, some height without needing to put in too much texturizer or anything really. So I'm using that wonderful Slim Invisibobble again because it has really nice hold and gives you a bit of that poof at the top. So I wear this to work sometimes and my manager was like, you look like a little, you know, poodle dog or Pomeranian. Um, I think it's fun though. And with some great earrings and, you know, red lip, this is really sweet. It is a bit childish, but it gives you that height. And then you can just straighten these front pieces and it looks really, really put together. Sometimes I find my, my front bits just get a little bit wavy while I sleep, um, or you could curl. And I love just curling this kind of bottom half of my head because it's a lot less labor intensive than worrying about all the front bits. Another fun thing you could do is put like a little bow scrunchie. That gives you, again, a really fun like festive look. And if you did want to get a poof in the front just different, you can pull that bang portion out a bit. And honestly, these hair elastics have some really good hold, so you don't need to worry about it getting messed up, but just pulling out some of the hairs there will make it look really fun and fresh, and your hair is completely off your face without tugging, because there's nothing tugging right here at the, the crown. I find that is just so uncomfortable. Um, but if you do want a different hair elastic that's maybe a little less showy, these silicone ones that I found on Amazon are fantastic. So these will give you really nice tight hold as well with a bit of wiggle room. Something that I also experience are little flyaways, little baby hairs, and this particular product called Flash Moment is revolutionary. So it is a mascara with hair gel on it and you can just comb it right through and pat it down and it will give you a very, very sleek and uh, glued down effect really on all your baby hairs. So this is a very easy way just to fix any of those flyaways without pulling out your you know, hairspray and everything. So flash moment, must have for me. I should even actually try it in my eyebrows, that would be lovely. 
So before I show you my very last hairstyle, we have the Vanilla Gourmand Perfumed Hairspray. This is new to me, but I am obsessed with it. It's from a brand called Unique, and it has a cool little stopper here to turn the pump on and off, and you literally just spritz it through your hair, and it's like a body splash, but designed specifically to fragrance your hair. This is, again, perfect for day two, because sometimes your hair can develop a little bit of a a little bit of a body smell, I find. It's usually not bad, it's just kind of like, mm, you need a you need to freshen up. So this is great. It is so delicious. It really is vanilla Gourmand. Um, it smells a little bit fruity, a little bit like winter berries mixed with vanilla. So that's lovely. I also wanted to say that this particular hair color is 99% natural with a bit of John Frieda Go Blonder in it. Um, I love a good lightning spray, but sometimes it can get a little bit orangey brassy at the ends. So the shampoo that I've been loving as a weekly treatment is this Provoke Touch of Silver shampoo and conditioner. It left my hair feeling so clean and so fresh and it never tints my shower purple or anything, although it is very dark. It never dirties my towels. It is sulfate free, it has UV filters, and it is vegan. So if you do have colored hair and you're trying to limit your trips to the salon, this is an amazing product to have. But not only that, I find it works so well to just keep your hair looking and feeling fresh, especially if you have that kind of oily combination skin like mine, it is great. My third hairstyle is very special. I've never been that good at braiding, but um, especially when my hair was a little bit longer than this, I learned how to do two kind of crown braids that just meet right at the nape of my neck. I enjoy French braids that kind of start mid head, but I always just find it to be kind of awkward and just tugs kind of a bit too much. So in doing these kind of crown braids, I can make it into a really comfortable hairstyle. Again, that does not tug at all, and that looks really, really chic. You start out by separating your hair either in the center or off to the side, wherever your part lies most naturally. Then you're going to want to grab just the front portion of your hair. It's almost like a two inch section all around. You're just gonna to wanna to pull that up and begin braiding quite close to the scalp. And I like to start quite close because I also have shorter hair from bangs that are growing in. But in addition to that, you're just going to want it to, you know, not really tug or, or get too poofy. And uh, you're going to want that beautiful waterfall effect throughout your hair. So you just start grabbing little bits of hair as they come in. Everybody's head shape is going to be different. But as the braid moves down your head, you're, wanting, you're going to want to kind of gather pieces in as you go. The hardest part is when you get to the bottom of the ear, and that is when I actually switch my hands around because instead of kind of braiding with my hands in the front of my head, I'm gonna actually be braiding with my hands in the back so that I can continue to hug my scalp in a way that brings the hair together at the back. So it is a bit tricky. You might wanna have somebody help you with this at first, my best tip would just be to do this one weekend, give yourself some extra time, and really try it out a few different a few different times to find your groove. Depending on the length of your hair, I either just join the ends together and create a little ponytail, as you can see in this photo right here, or in today's look, I actually kind of cross the ends up into a very uniformed like U shape and then I put a barrette on top just to camouflage any of the little extra pieces of hair that were poking out. So my final hairstyle here is one that I do especially on day three. When I have really really bad looking hair the knotted headband comes to town. So I literally just brush my hair completely back, put one of these great bands in, pull these little ends forward so that it's not too slicked back and it is instant chicness. You can just spray a little bit of dry shampoo at the front if you need, but at the back, since it's all just held into a nice kind of tulip shape, I find it looks really, really fresh because the ends of my hair never get bad looking. It's really just um, the, the main scalp roots area of my hair. So this is fantastic keeps my hair off my face and I can also wear my glasses with it. These are a little bit dirty, but you'll get the gist. 
I literally just have to push these back a little and then my glasses nestle in right in front. So I bought a bunch of these from H&M, AliExpress, Forever 21. They are so easy to find. And if they're too tight at the bottom, just hold them out like this for a while. You might run the risk of breaking it, but um, even just bending, you know, repeatedly like this for a while, kind of warming it up is really good. And then it'll fit a bit more comfortably. So those are my four day two hairstyles to keep your hair kind of off your face, looking fresh, and also ones that don't tug on your hair. I find that my hair is very fine, but I have a lot of it. So the moment I start to put any kind of ponytails right back here, it just gives me the worst headaches and also damages my hair. I find that I'm getting some, you know, grow back around here. Um, and that's probably from, you know, yanking on my hair a bit too much. So I'm trying to be quite gentle with it. And these products are all great for that. Something great about the Invisibobbles too is that they don't tug like traditional hair elastics would. So that is everything, you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you have any second day hair hacks? And um, let me know which one's your favorite. I would love to do this again and share some more styles with you. So drop a comment below. Be sure to subscribe to see when that next video pops up. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.